Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ganyan, thank you for stopping by. Today we're talking about Hitman 3 and the freelancer mode that came to the game about a month ago. I really wanted to make this video back then, but I didn't get the chance, so I'm really excited to talk about it because this is really special. But before we really get into it, I would like to ask you to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video because it really helps out the channel. Only 2% of my viewers are subscribed right now, so it would be really much appreciated. And without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, let me just say I'm not an expert on Hitman, okay? I didn't play all the Hitman games, I played some of them, but I mainly started playing hardcore back when Hitman 2016 came out. So I'm a casual, I'm a casual Hitman gamer, I'm not an expert, I'm making this video as someone who just really appreciates this game and really appreciates what the developers are doing. So don't expect me to go into details, you might know more than me, you probably know more than me, I just wanna let you know in case you don't know much about the game. So starting off, what is Hitman The World of Assassinations? It's a collection, it's a collection of Hitman 1, 2, 3 and all of the DLCs. You get 20 something maps with this collection and let me tell you it's more than worth the money. You pay for one game but you get content for three games including DLCs. So it's really a lot of stuff but I think you have to pay for the DLCs alone but I'm not sure about that but either way at least you get content for three games which is a lot. Hitman maps are really big. 20 maps might not sound like a lot, but believe me, they are very dense. They are big, and they are dense, and they are open, and you can basically do a lot of stuff in it. If you don't know how Hitman goes, you have to sneak in, take down a target, and then sneak out most of the time. 90% of the time, that's your objective. They drop you into an open world, you get to get some stuff with you, you plan the mission, you dress up, you have a concealed weapon sometimes, you prepare yourself, and you head out, take a target down, and then head away. The new freelancer mode really changed the conversation. I see a lot of people really excited about it, including myself. It made Hitman 3 into a roguelike experience. You start and you have a safe house, and it's basically empty, you have nothing in it, but you get to upgrade it, add stuff throughout the game as you assassinate different targets and move up on the ranking ladder of these syndicate members that you have to take down. And the special thing about the roguelike mode in this special game is that it has a lot of options. So most of the time roguelikes are really fun to play, for example I played the roguelike mode in Far Cry, I really enjoyed it, if you want to hear about that I made a video about it, it will be linked. But still, even though I enjoyed it, it kinda got repetitive after a while because there's only that a limited amount of things to do. But here in Hitman, because there's just such a big variety of locations and options to take down targets and equipment to use to take down these targets, it basically never gets old. When you go into a mission, there's so many variables that every mission feels different. And you get a, a nice award for it, you get a customization item, you get a new weapon, you get a new outfit, you get to upgrade your safe house, every mission gives you a different reward and they're all worthwhile. They all make a visual effect, a visual difference, and a different playstyle too. It really is a special game mode, I love how it makes you explore every different location in the game, but there's one little nitpick that I have, and it's that if you didn't play the game before, this mode is gonna be really hard for you to get into. I didn't play Hitman 3 until the freelancer mode came out, I played 1 and 2. So I went into the freelancer with a lot of knowledge of the first two kind of maps from the first two games, but I had zero knowledge of Hitman 3 levels. And when I first started playing it, it was hard as balls to do anything in it. It was just too big, too many people, too many variables, and I just basically got lost, and I lost the mission multiple times. Every time I had a Hitman 3 map, I lost. But when I played the maps, when I played the story, and then went back to Freelancer, it got a lot better. By then, I knew the maps, I know what I'm supposed to do, I know how they play out most of the time, so it makes it a lot more fun. And because it's a roguelike, it adds all those different variables, and uh, they keep it fresh, basically. And I really think that making this video about this specific game is really important right now because we don't have a lot of games like this. Most of the games that I play or I see are either open world games, shooter games, 
or roguelike games or indie games. There isn't a lot of different variety in the gaming landscape nowadays. Of course, different open world games play differently, have different mechanics, but they're still open world. Even Elden Ring and God of War, I've seen that before. I played Dark Souls, so I know what Elden Ring is. I played God of War before, so I know what that is. But Hitman, there's not much like it. If there is any, uh, anyway. There isn't much like Hitman 3, or Hitman The World of Assassinations, I should say. It's a very unique gameplay style, a very unique idea. It's a lot more serious than other games, and the stealth is really well implemented. If you've been having trouble with stealth in recent Assassin's Creed games, this game is for you. The stealth in it is really fun. You have so many options, both stealth-wise stealth and combat-wise, but I want to point out that the combat and the shooting aren't that fleshed out, but I'm okay with it because that's not the focus of the game. The game is a very, very much a stealth game, so I, I do expect imperfect shooting feel, and it won't be as good as, let's say, Outriders or something. Visually, the game is really good looking, you can see it in the gameplay right now. All the maps that are from Hitman 1 and 2 got updated into Hitman 3 levels of visuals. They added more details, changed the NPCs around, made them more visually appealing, and they updated it to match that 2020 style that we have right now. So all the maps look great, even the old ones, and the new ones look amazing. The Dubai level, the Berlin level, they all look really stunning. I don't know if they have ray tracing or not, but it does look amazing. The visuals are just mind-blowing. Gameplay-wise, like I said, you have a lot of options. You can play story or you can play the freelancer mode. And I know that I'm making freelancer up to be this big basically a whole separate game and it really is i'm doing that because it is the way freelancer plays out makes hitman play like a different game it's like a new game even so if you buy this game you basically have two ways to play it the story mode and the freelancer mode and they're both very much full of content and you won't get bored of them anytime soon if you start right now my only big big problem with hitman is that it's online. You can play the maps offline, but it's very limited. The developers said that they are doing that because they want to keep the leaderboards free of cheaters or something like that, but I really don't like that idea. I really hate that I have to be online for my Hitman game. I don't think it's okay to do that. I don't think it will be fun for anyone when the servers go down in 10 years from now, but hopefully until then they updated. You know, that's the one thing that's okay with live service games is that there's always the chance to get that update that changes it. But as of right now, without this uh, future, maybe coming, maybe not update, the game is always online. If you want to get your ranks, if you want to get your unlocks, customization, all of these different things in the game, you have to play it online. You cannot play it offline because you get no rewards then. You just play the most basic version of every map. So that's my big problem with it, but I guess in this age, most people are okay with that. Me personally, I'm not okay with it, and it really pisses me off, but the game is still okay, it's still fun, so I put up with it. But if you are personally the type of person who doesn't get annoyed from this, then good for you, there's no bad things about this game. You really should give it a shot, because other than this online problem, I don't see any faults with the game. Unless you are not the kind of person who likes stealth, but that's a personal opinion. You know, if you don't like stealth, I don't think that's a problem with the game. It's just a personal opinion, so this game won't be good for you. But it still has the options for combat and for fun. So, like I said in the beginning, I'm no expert on Hitman. I'm just here as a fan, as a person who loves to play this game because it really is special. It's different than anything else on the market right now. I really think you should try it if you've been starved for some new stuff, for some new way to play, for something that you're not used to. You should really try out this game. If you're bored of open worlds, FPS shooters, anything of that kind, Give Hitman a shot, I really think you won't regret it. And you're paying very little money for a very big amount of content. Each of these maps, like I said, is very detailed, very fun, and you're gonna have a good time with it. But other than that, it's all I had to say for Hitman. And now on a more personal note, the channel didn't get many updates lately, I know that. It's because I'm in the middle of exam season. I apologize, but it should be ending in less than a month. 
and hopefully then I can get back to normal, upload more videos, have more fun. So let me know what you want to hear about by then. Let me know what games you're interested in. I made videos of Destiny, Borderlands, Far Cry, Horizon. So if you're interested in any game, I'm sure you can find something on the channel. And let me know what you would like to see on the channel in the future. But as usual, thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, share it, whatever you want to do. Do the YouTube stuff. It is really very much appreciated. And other than that, have a nice day.